Hi everyone, I'm Ron Corning with Houdini.com. Buying organic vegetables is great, but growing your own is even better. How do you get started? Well, Scott Meyer is the editor of Organic Gardening, and he's joining us now with some tips on how to get the ball rolling. Scott, thanks for being here. It's great to be out in the garden with you today, Ron. All right, first of all, Scott, why organic? As you said, you get great produce, better than you can buy, but it's also just satisfying to be outside the fresh air and the sunshine and working in concert with nature to produce a great result. Nutritionally, you get better food, and it's fresher and tastes better than any food you can buy. Yeah, a lot of chefs are going that way. All the chefs know that organic food is the best kind of food. It's also cool. When you're talking about your garden, you're going to tell people, I'm an organic gardener, not just a gardener. So take us through it, the first step. You're looking for a place that gets full sun to grow those great summer vegetables everybody loves. That means eight to 10 hours of sunlight a day at the peak of summertime. You also want to make sure that it has good drainage. That means that water doesn't sit there when it rains. When you leave water on the soil sitting there, it can cause all kinds of other problems. So make sure that the soil is drained well. Just pour a little water on top, and if it drains away, you're great. In terms of the amount of space you need for the plot, what would you recommend? Some people don't have a lot of space. You don't need a lot of space, and you also don't want to really start big. A lot of new gardeners make the mistake of planting too much and making too big of a garden that they can't maintain. So I recommend starting smaller and working with a space that's about four by eight, maybe four by 10. The four feet width allows you to reach into the center of the garden to pull weeds or to harvest or whatever you need to do without stepping on the soil. You never want to step on it once you've turned it. So Scott has put together a garden cart that has all the materials and tools you need to get your garden plot ready, and I'm impressed with how little you need to really get started. It's great. You don't need a lot of fancy machines or, or expensive tools to get started. Everything you, you need is really available at your local hardware store or home center. Beginning with really a wooden stake. The wooden stakes you'll find in any hardware store, and these are great for just marking off the area and giving yourself a feel for how big it is and how it's going to work with the sun and the drainage. And this is a large size spade, right? It's a large size spade, and it's a different than a shovel because it's square at the bottom, and it has these foot spots here that you can use to push the spade into the soil. It's important that you get a sharp spade. Most of the tools that you buy don't have an edge on them. This one needs an edge so that you can cut through the sod and lift it right up. And then you have to sort of work that soil over, and this is what you need for that. A fork, and a garden fork is the right tool for working the soil. You want one that has a wide spacing between the tines. You'll see some forks that are closer together for other purposes. You want this one because you're going to put it in the soil and use it to break up the clods that are underneath where the grass was. So we're talking about the hardest way, which is to mark the plot, take the sod up, begin working the soil. But there's another process that people might be able to begin, let's say, earlier in the spring or in the fall, which doesn't involve any of that. And you call it lasagna, which is sort of layering. Explain that for people. It's really an easier way to do it because you're not removing the sod at all. In fact, the sod is breaking down and it becomes that organic matter that's feeding the underground microbes. In this method, you layer some things on top. Newspaper, straw, grass clippings, shredded leaves, again, all natural things you have. The newspaper is very effective in killing the grass off, and then the other things start to break down and begin to create rich, fertile soil. In fact, you don't even need to work it with the pitchfork. In that case, you're just cutting holes into it and planting right through it. All right, let's talk about exactly what goes into the soil to get it ready for planting. Uh, what do you recommend there? Because we're going organic here, so we're no chemical fertilizers or pesticides. Absolutely correct. And one of the most important reasons to do that is because plants are fed in a, by the microorganisms in the soil, and those chemical fertilizers and pesticides, herbicides, can kill them. Mm -hmm. In an organic system, you're really nourishing those microbes, and they're doing the work for you.